Hello there, my wonderful creative friends. How are you today? So I'm back with another um, time-lapse painting of one of my newest paintings, A Girl With Her Fox Friend. And I um, was approached by this wonderful company called Arteza, who asked me to uh, review some of their art supplies. And I always love reviewing art supplies, of course. So they sent me uh, two versions of their watercolor sets, one in the tins in the in little cakes, and also a box of their watercolor tubes. And uh, yeah, it was really wonderful to play with these. They have also kindly offered a 10% off anyone who wants to um, try them out. Uh, and you need to buy them through my link. It is an affiliate link and you need to use a code to get the 10% off. Just check the video description below. So look at these beautiful tubes here. I really enjoyed playing with them. Lots of lovely, yummy colors. <laughs> So today I will be using some of the Arteza supplies as well as my usual other supplies and I'll mention in the video what I'm using. So um, for this um, painting I started off with my um, usual uh, Neo Art Pastel in Salmon which is completely nearly finished now and they have uh, discontinued, sadly they've discontinued these um, crayons so I'm gonna have to figure out a different base color <laughs> for my future paintings. But here you can see me um, starting with that as a base layer. And then I am um, using Santa's Flesh, is a matte acrylics in Cere by the, the brand Ceramcoat um, that I like. Sometimes I don't always use it, depending on what mood I'm in, but sometimes I like to fortify the layer a little bit. Or if it's very splotchy, I like to um, use a, like a light, slightly diluted uh, layer of acrylics but I don't always do that so my methods vary depending on my mood and depending on what else is happening on the page so I agonized actually a little while on the design of this painting today because I've done a lot of foxes lately and um, the thing is I, I feel very kind of drawn to the fox and I kind of wanted to do a fox again but I wanted the fox to be in a different sort of position than in other some of my other paintings so I then decided to wrap her wrap the fox around her neck but I wanted to make sure that she didn't look like a fur what is it boa or a fur scarf it's not really the word I wanted to make sure that people understood that she was awake <laughs> alive and awake oh here we go so here I'm using some of the Arteza um, watercolors and also you saw me use a bit of white acrylics on the skin uh, there as well so yes so the fox is the live fox around her neck so here I'm using the, the watercolors by Arteza and I'm going for a green, greeny, turquoisey blue kind of color scheme. Um, and I liked how they were uh, fairly potent and vibrant. Sometimes I, in the past, I used to have more of a love-hate relationship with watercolors because they usually just came in sort of these very bland colors. And they, nowadays, I think they're bringing out a lot more vibrant colors in the water, in watercolor sets. So this set as well has a lot of water, uh, bright colors, which I do love, very wide variety. And so I used red on the mouth and now I'm using kind of blue, dark blues and dark greens or turquoisey type greens. I'm mixing them in with a bit of blue here and I'm giving her <laughs> green, teal, green hair. And some of you who follow me on Facebook will know that I've recently dyed my hair a teal. So I think that may have been influenced by that. <laughs> and my son Elliot also has his, made his hair um, green recently. So for the details, I like using Posca pen, which is an acrylics marker. And I try to avoid not using too many dark lines to avoid sort of a cartoon look, though you might like that. And here I think I think I swapped to I switched to a Tombow, a black Tombow, because my Posca pen was a little bit dried out. So I add details uh, with black pen here and there when I where I feel I need it. So yeah, and so I'm uh, more on the design. So um, I was really happy with eventually with the design that the girl, the fox was around her neck. Okay, here, here I'm using some color pencils. Um, these are non-water soluble. I find them quite handy to add shading. Um, yeah, the design in the end I really liked and was sort of different uh, from my other fox paintings because they're often sort of sitting in a position where they look up at the girl. And this one I felt like was so lovely and close, like um, this, this fox really wanted to be close to her and it made me feel happy to make. <laughs> so I'm using a mix of colors here with the, sorry, you can't actually see it so well because I 
you're slightly out of shot ca camera shot um i was using a mix of purples gray and black and a bit of blue maybe with the, with the um color pencils i'm also using a bit of color pencil inside the mouth to create a little bit more roundedness and shading what am i doing here oh yeah i'm using some whites and other colors to kind of liven up the eyes a little bit. So highlights and a little bit of blue in the crayon series. The other thing you saw me using there was a blending stump. Blending stumps are great for if you want to smoosh or smudge some of your crayon on, or sometimes a pastel of some kind. The uh, blending stumps are really good for um, creating a bit of um, blending. That's why it's called a blending stump, Way. Hey! <laughs> okay, uh, here I'm working more on the eyes, a bit more detail to give them more depth and more sh sh shape. And here I have decided to try out some of the Arteza uh, watercolors, liquidy, more liquidy watercolors in the tubes. And I'm going, I'm choosing orange vari variations of orange for the fox that I'm now going to start working on. And I did um, struggle beforehand with figuring out what color scheme to use because of course when you use a fox which is predominantly sort of an orangey brown red you, you, and it's a prominent part of the painting you're gonna have to be careful with your color your overall color scheme because it has to kind of work together well so if you look on the color wheel orange as a complementary of blue um, but you can get away with a blue green if your orange is also not pure orange which so you'll see that uh, in the end I decided on a color scheme of sort of bluey greeny more sea green or turquoise teal this type of blue rather than b bright ultramarine blue let's say although that could also work here you go you can see here like it's a sort of a turquoisey blue um, against an orange that I'm eventually also kind of darkening a bit of brown. So overall the color combination works quite well uh, but it is a tricky one because I often go oh my goodness a big blob of orange and I, the funny thing is I have seriously I've got I think I've got like five or six paintings that have foxes in them and I always manage to sort of not make the orange let you know not let the orange be a problem um, but it isn't as straightforward. I find orange not so easy to work with, neither red. I don't find red easy to work with either. I end up having to use it. Although you can obviously decide to make a pink fox or something, but here we go. So I'm burnt sienna here by the Arteza um, watercolor tube. And I'm mixing that, note, I'm mixing that ever so slightly with the bluey green. And that helps with kind of making this slightly giving it some neutral tones effectively so that it isn't just a completely vibrant brown uh, sorry orange fox which is the the trickiness sometimes you, you if you're painting animals like this and you think okay orange is a fox you forget to sort of bring in the the more nuanced colors that a fox's fur has <laughs> So here we go, I'm using sort of browns that are slightly mixed in with a sort of a bluey greeny and it's going to help with the overall kind of colour scheme. So I continue adding uh, darker oranges and browns and some of that mixed in with blue to shade. And then when I've, when I've done that, you could see I just uh, grabbed another black Posca pen which has got acrylics paint in it. And then I like to kind of bring in details and uh, doodles at times as well. I like to, uh, my animals and none of my creations are ever very realistic. So I like to add um, doodles or symbols or words sometimes to my girls and my animals. Um, you know, like the butterfly wings and whatever else and that kind of stuff. And in fact, at this point, I decided that I thought the tail, a white tipped tail, was just a little bit too boring. <laughs> I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I did some collage in that area of the tail? So, excuse me, I've got some stickers here, and uh, I thought it'd be quite interesting was uh, to add a bit of 
collage there. I will go over it with paint as well, or I think it might be gesso, I'm not sure. Just to mute, uh, mute the, the colors back, but I enjoy how it came out in the end. So here I am adding, I'm starting to add some doodles with a black Posca pen to both the girl and to the fox. You can see little stars and little, all sorts of symbols and shapes and doodles. I like adding hearts or not to my characters. They are very soothing to create actually. And then here um, I decided that I wanted a collaged background for her top. I start first with just book pages. They, um, I find book pages very lovely to work with. I've worked with book pages for many, many years as part of my collage. Oh, and if you're wondering what I'm, uh, I have on in the background on my phone there, I'm suddenly noticing it's in within the camera shot. I was uh, listening to uh, Russell Brand's uh, show Rebirth that had just come out on Netflix. <laughs> it's not meant to be in uh, in view, but hey. <laughs> So yeah, um, I like using book pages as collage elements. They really add some interesting kind of texture to painting. And here I'm adding a color over her top. So I started with a light blue. And then I remember just really not struggling, but thinking about hmm, the color scheme is not easy. Like I discussed in the beginning, what do I do? Do I go for orange in the background? Or because orange is a very bright, uh, possibly problematic color when it comes to having also other characters in there. So you see, I do add orange. I decide to try it out, quite like it. But then I also think I need to mute back some of this orange. So I'm using a brayer and some white gesso here to mute back the background. I do that anyway, usually, not only if I have very vibrant colors, but it's, just, it's one of the steps that I really enjoy. Um, it unifies, um, it tends to unify uh, the background and the painting. So in this process of adding that um, layer of gesso, I liked how the orange in the background became quite pastel. And I thought, actually, you know what? It would be really nice. And also, well, it'll be helpful to um, have the orange on the fox be the brightest orange. And then the background can have some bright orange, but mostly let's keep it pastel-y, is what my thinking was then. Or so before I work more on the background, I added some more detail to the hair. I think I'm using a Stabilo Oil pencil here, which, oh, no, and yes, and also um, the Water Soluble Crayon. So I'm just adding some more detail really to the hair, firming that up a bit, and also to the top. So here I'm using a darker turquoise to kind of bring in some, uh, yeah, a bit of a darker color there. Oh, I think I'm also, oh, here I'm back to using the Arteza watercolor set that had a, this is kind of an indigo or a Payne's gray color in there. Mm, so I wanted the top to be a little bit darker. And so you can see as I walk, work around the painting, I uh, kind of come back, go, come, go and come back. So I'll come back on here or I'll leave it alone for a while and then I'll come back to finish it off or add some more. And so. I work around the painting. I definitely first focus more on the main characters, but as the eventually the background comes back in as well, I will go back in uh, into work on the top or work on the hair, work on the face, and I kind of respond also to what's happening in the background, and then in relation to the face and the characters again. So you're, I'm constantly sort of back and forth, back and forth in a conversation <laughs> with the painting. You can see here that I'm uh, lightening up the orange. Did you see that? I added some white acrylics or white gesso. And then you see that really splotchy orange uh, <laughs> splot right by the left of her head here, this splotch. Um, by the time I end this video, I haven't removed it, but um, eventually after I looked at it again and came back the next day, I thought that orange was too bright and it distracted me too much. So I actually reduced that orange, I think in the video or the photos that I've uh, shown at the beginning and the end of this uh, video, you'll see that the orange is, that orange is not so bright. Anywho, so here I decided that I wanted her to have freckles and then I thought, oh no, would it be cool if her freckles were both star shape and normal shape? So I go a bit crazy with the, the star shaped freckles. I like uh, messing around with girls' faces. And what I mean by messing around is adding cute little details and hearts and stars and hanging things or words and star-shaped um, freckles <laughs> or little 
natural shapes like this, leaves and plants like things. So I'm using a white Bosca pen here to lighten up the freckles a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I bring some, I intensify some of the highlights a little bit more. So, oh yeah, and I decided on including this butterfly and coincidentally found a butterfly that um, had kind of, was kind of applicable to the color scheme. So that was nice. I had a bit, see, a bit of orange in there, a bit of green and a bit of yellowy orange. Uh, that kind of worked really well. And here I started adding my um, the doodles that I like. Um, so I often include star-shaped flowers. Star-shaped flowers or houses or heart-shaped flowers or all sorts of doodles that are meaningful to me personally. They kind of uh, are really important to me to add. I like uh, them. And this part of the process of the painting always uh, is very soothing. All of it is soothing, but this is particularly soothing because it's soothing as it's meditative and all these doodles are uh, easy to make and they don't require a lot of thinking, which is something I like because I am an overthinker. <laughs> so in here I've got um, butterfly wings, you know, all sorts of doodles I add and I, they to me are usually the final uh, elements that I add to a painting and a very enjoyable uh, part of adding, you know, of, of, of uh, the creation of a painting. Here at first I had drawn these in white and then I thought, oh, they don't stand out enough. So then I decided to add some more black to them and now they stand out a lot more. Um, these little twiggy things have become kind of something that I really like doing each time. They evolved over time. There were first just uh, little swirls that came out of butterfly wings and now they have leaves and they've become more intricate. Intricate, that's the word. I don't know how you pronounce it. Ha ha ha. And then I was like, what am I going to do with this background? I'm not sure. And I decided in the end to do a high horizon, not a low horizon, uh, with some houses in the background and a staircase leading up towards the village. Villages and houses uh, represent community and connection to me. Um, it's something that I find uh, that the world is missing a lot. Uh, we don't uh, kind of have a lot of this sort of many people miss connection and are very lonely and um, I feel like I find it quite hard to create community because of how everyone's living their lives it's not so easy anymore so I think um, whenever you see little houses in my work it refers to the lack uh, the, the, not the lack well the lack of community and wishing for that to be more so I'm almost like trying to will it or <laughs> create it into existence so yeah, so it's a staircase towards community and connection almost. And I like the flags. Flags for me are a sign of celebration. So, and stars are just my usual kind of uh, elements that I like putting in the background. Here I'm using that blending stump again um, to put a bit of shadow around all these elements. And I think I'm using, you can do that, uh, the, the shadow thing when you use them to be low all because it's quite smudgy right now we're nearly there now I'm just tidying up the details with black Posca pen and I think also with white Posca pen and obviously this is time-lapse so it looks like it's going really fast but this is actually a part of the process that takes quite some time it's not so uh, it doesn't go as fast as you can see it here obviously so we're nearly done um, I really like how this came out and here we are, it's pretty much finished. As you can see, I left that orange splodge in, but the next morning or next hour or whatever, I decided to make that lighter. But I really like how this came out. Uh, it's such a lovely kind of connective piece. Um, very meaningful for, my, for me and myself, and uh, it was lovely working on it. And also I struggled with the color scheme, but now really happy with it. So I hope you like it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and do click the little bell that will notify you each time I uh, post a new video. Also, I wanted to let you know that uh, I run art classes on my site www.willowing.org and uh, we are about to start our very new life book course on the 1st of January and I'll be uh, <clears throat> teaching lots of fun lessons in that with another 20, 32 actually, sorry, <laughs> 32 other amazing artists. So do check that out in the links below and I hope to see you there. We are going to have a lot of creative time together and a lot of fun. So hope you check it out. Thank you.